Good afternoon. Uh, this is Sumant Patnaik. Um, uh, this uh, the paper title is uh, Teaching Computer Graphics Using Observable Notebook. Um, my uh, co-author is Alexis Benamara. In this paper, we are talking about our experience in using this uh, notebook uh, to teach a large class remotely, and particularly during pandemic. Uh, so the basic uh, the plan is today I'll tell you what is Observable Net Notebook and how it helped. I'll show you through a couple of examples and then point you to our notebook collections for you to look at. While showing the examples also, you have uh, you can have access to uh, the notebook directly to see exactly what, how things work. All right. So let, let us uh, continue. So general problem in teaching computer graphics, fundamental computer graphics uh, to an undergraduate audience is basically, you know, uh, getting them uh, to understand the math back, to have the math background. Uh, most of them lack that one, though they learn physics and you expect them, but many of them do not have. They have programming background because most of the students are computer science, but their experience with teaching uh, writing programs is limited to say about 20 lines, not more than that. And you know that shader programming and all to create rendering requires actually a significant number of uh, uh, lines of code. Okay, And then the concept from abstract data to actually visual is a little bit of difficult. You have to slowly start building into um, that. Okay, So the solution generally is extensive use of whiteboards. We use whiteboards to sort of draw lines, draw vectors, draw points and see exactly how the coordinate transformation changes things and then show some illustrations about the visual concepts. Uh, and uh, abstract data to visual concept and so interactive demonstration and multiple hands-on practice sessions so that they can build up uh, from the from those sessions to work on their assignments though that has been a general uh, general practice uh, uh, for always okay so when it uh, went to teaching remotely then all of a sudden that sort of thing immediately you know we had to find a solution and uh, to replace all that we are doing in the classroom by something remotely okay of course you're going to still powerpoint is there but that's not an illustration probably you could pass on to a program like some code or web page uh, to look at but that doesn't really help much because you know you have to still keep them engaged with what is going on in the class so it has little difficult so we needed a tool that would help us create interactive illustrations that they can actually simultaneously use while they're being taught in the class okay and see exactly the effects and similarly create interactive demonstration also to do go with uh, this uh, shader concepts we introduced and make changes and see how the how the shading changes and so, and we needed some replacement on hands-on practice lab sessions and so that they can modify, they can see exactly work on their assignments, okay? And keep them, while doing this, keep themselves, and I mean, somehow keep them engaged and not uh, lost, lose interest in this one, okay? So we looked from, for some sort of interactive tool uh, to actually help us in this one. And then we started thinking of using Observable Notebook. Observable Notebook is a general a web-based notebook, like many notebooks you may be familiar with, many are familiar with, for example, um, Jupyter Notebook, people are familiar with Python programming. Okay, so it's like that, it's a browser-based, It's uh, the notebook is composed of uh, cells, computational cells which can execute and uh, compute a value and computed value may be stored for reference by other cells. So it is similar to that one. So, but Observable Notebook is a newcomer in this particular notebook uh, family. Okay, so it is a little bit of different from those existing notebooks. Of course, it supports JavaScript. And that worked well for us because uh, we have already we had already migrated to WebGL uh, to teach to uh, rendering concept, rendering pipeline, and all. Okay, and then uh, the, the main difference is the ordering of the cells is not important. So people familiar with Jupyter had to uh, adjust to that one uh, as well. You could, they, they can write in order, but ordering is not important. They can write in any order they want. And that helps us to actually show the visual and then add the code later on and see, and then make some changes somewhere else and see the effect immediately. Make the ch change in 
code, change in the data and see what happens. Okay, so how it handles that one internally, it, it maintains, actually creates a, 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 a graph and so basically dependency, which cell depends on which one and then executes them in a topological order. So any changes you make anywhere is immediately reflected in the whole, a whole page without any problem because automatically it is, it actually uh, executes. You do not have to execute yourself. So this is just an example of how things work. So I'm showing here a, a snapshot of this observable notebook, a pay, notebook page. So this uh, the lines in the the part in gray actually is the cell code. So it could be a simple statement, arithmetic statement, could be a block of code, uh, could be some, uh, could be a function call, and all that one. So the results are in, appear on the top. Okay. So here uh, the simple results of multiplication appears, here the results of a block appears as well. Okay, You could assign variable to all these statements, all these blocks, so the results re are returned by this block. Always some results re are returned, could be if you don't return anything in a block then it's undefined, but generally a single statement returns some value. So those can be uh, uh, given a name to that one that can be referenced in other cells. For example, uh, so this foo here is referenced referenced here in this particular cell and it's executed and the result is shown here. Uh, so observable notebook understands scoping principles. Okay, so if it is something uh, defined locally then it uh, does uh, the outside variable doesn't actually interfere with that one. So every cell is actually a computational cell. So a cell can be also creating HTML output, for example, a paragraph. So it's a markdown here, but it's a function which executes the following code within these back codes and then uh, creates HTML output there, which is basically uh, some text, um, um, uh, text line or text paragraph. Okay. And so, 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 so the cells can be, uh, output can be a number, can be a string, can be a function, can be a JavaScript, also can be any rendered HTML element, text, image, illustration, or SVG element or even HTML interactive widget. So interact with this one, it, the widget returns a value and that value can be used. Okay, so it has been developed for rendering data, data visualization actually. So it knows that it, it knows how to use SVG and also you can use, make use of uh, Canvas uh, to render, uh, to uh, draw using Context Studio or WebGL. And this WebGL and Context Studio, actually these are the two main things which actually help us uh, to use as a teaching tool. First of all, WebGL is available to this for us to use. And then Context 2D drawing and SVG drawing actually helps us to create illustration. It also has a LaTeX so that you know if you want to write equations, so the outputs can be uh, can be as good as uh, uh, you creating a new PowerPoint. So illustrations and an explanation of illustrations can go with uh, without any compromise in the quality um, uh, of uh, um, to to convey uh, whatever you wanted. Okay. So it helps create static and, and interactive illustrations and renderings along with written explanations. So if you wanted to write and explain something, some concepts, you can also put that one along with the equation, as I told you, along with the drawing. And so you can use your own code to the draw to use the drawing, or you can use any imported pub, uh, code uh, from some other page uh, to use there as well. Okay. Or if you created something in one page, you can import that and use it in multiple places. And then, because it's a notebook style, that means a, a large programming code can is broken down to small parts. It helps us to help the student and instructor what you to um, understand and, and debug complex rendering concept. If student did something and in in wrote something, it's much easier to go over and see okay what student might have made uh, changes or made mistakes and all that one. So independent editing capability allow interactive changes of data and code. You could change the data, you could change the code and see the results immediately. So I'll show you two examples. One is actually the WebGL rendering. Okay, so how how the program one can uh, one can teach the programming concepts uh, through illustrations and through examples. So here we want to show that we are rendering a simple triangle. All the coordinates are within the clip box, so the transformation is not required at this moment. 
we use a, a framework a little bit of higher level compared to WebGL, which helped us to actually um, it, it reduce uh, the bulky coding part of uh, handshaking between the graphics pipeline and JavaScript. Whereas it it required everybody to do uh, all the uh, whoever wants to use that one uh, to write shader programs to do any rendering. Okay, so there is no compromise in that one. So I'll start with this uh, uh, simple rendering of a triangle mess. In fact, you start with a simple triangle. We show them how to create a canvas here and how to pass on that canvas to uh, create an OpenGL context. And in fact, Regal takes, uh, wraps the context around with additional code uh, so that you can you can provide um, the shader pro shader code and data so it will automatically um, pass on the data to the driver and the shader code to the driver as well and then get ready for rendering so it simply clears the canvas and then you start uh, creating a renderable and passing on that renderable to create rendering function which can be called uh, to do the rendering so here on this side, again, a code which appears in another cell, which I call this renderable triangle zero. It's here the vertex shader, fragment shader, and attribute, there's a one-to-one -one correspondent to the attribute. So attributes uh, object actually covers all the attributes required in this code. And then so you talk about you are, you are doing uh, primitive rendering. So remember that this link is given here. So you could try out uh, um, uh, immediately and see uh, what is uh, being shown here. Similarly, students while teach while being taught, they are asked to actually make changes like I'm doing here. Okay, so. Now I'm saying, okay, in the previous rendering, uh, the, you, you, this, uh, the triangle actually lost its aspect ratio because this uh, canvas was rectangle. So you have to correct for that by sending some information about this aspect ratio and that has to be sent as a uniform variable. So introduce the concept of uniforms and send that and see how it uh, changes. And then we also introduce, okay, immediately use an interactive widgets to uh, choose a uh, color and start changing the color of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the render triangle and that color information is sent via uniforms. And then we introduce the concept of additional attributes. So in the incremental changes to the code and seeing the effect was pretty useful. Okay, so then some scaling into this one. So I, before uh, teaching about complex transformation. Then light matter interaction, which is a difficult concept, we showed through a simple illustrations. We showed here, okay, what happens when you change between the point to a, a direction, when it's changed the orientation, what happens and see the effect in terms of this lobe we create here. And each row actually shows how much is reflected in all direction and okay, how uh, diffuse Lambertian surfaces are uh, direction view independent. And then we introduce the concept of a specular light and show the view dependence and uh, between different types of models for specular light and, and even introduce uh, the spotlight to see exactly what happens. So these ones, we uh, during the class, we, we give the students the notebook uh, uh, link to look at it and see the changes, okay? And ask them to make the changes so that, you know, they understand what happens. They can experiment with adding new code, adding new data, so they are getting ready for their assignments and and um, and see. And for us also, it was easier to look at, the, uh, to help them where they made, uh, uh, to find out where they made any changes or where they made any error. And then, you know, it helped us to grade assignments in this one. So. I, we have uh, so we have made this uh, notebook collection available for anyone to see. It's about 50 notebooks are there in that collection. Anybody wishing to use that is welcome to use it. You are encouraged to uh, fork any of the for your teaching need, modify, improve, and then you know add supplement to what is already existing. So if you do any changes, you added something, please do share with us or chat with others. Okay, thank you. And I will welcome any questions. Okay, um, uh, let me stop here.